Hall of Fame Day, and today we'll be honoring a 12-year-old violinist, and a 13-year-old magician will perform some amazing tricks. Later, Fred's got a few things to get off his chest, and today is the final episode of our club movie, The Secret of Lost Creek. But now, let's check out the Mendel High Basketball Finals. Team spirit. We gotta hold on. Hold on, but we've got. Don't let it go because we got a lot. I'm Fred Newman, you've seen me around, and I'm here to register a small complaint with the writers and producers of the Mouse Club. I feel that recently some of the comedy on this show has, well, it's simply gone too far. 
I mean, over the course of this series, I have personally been drowned in mushroom soup. I'll get you for this! Sprayed with pieces. Attacked by an enraged girl. Bound and gagged and tied to a chair. And mistreated in numerous other ways. Well, I'm here to tell you, just about had it. Look, now, nobody enjoys a good laugh more than I do, but, come on, enough is enough. Why can't we do away with these crude physical devices and offer you, our audience, a more sophisticated brand of humor? For example, why couldn't we highlight the piercing wit of one of our greatest American presidents, Abraham Lincoln? I'm sure you at home would appreciate that, right? For instance, there was this time someone asked the president how tall a man ought to be, and he replied, well, a man's legs ought to be long enough to reach the ground. <laughs> See, you're laughing. You find this kind of humor, this subtle humor, very funny. And I'm sure you'd also enjoy the very humorous remark that playwright Oscar Wilde once made. He said, to love yourself is the beginning of a lifetime of romance. <laughs> <laughs> now, I knew you'd laugh at this kind of material. Then there is this the great author and wit, Mark Twain, one of my favorites. He once observed, man is the only animal that blushes or needs to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad you responded to this. See, I think I've proved my point here. We don't have to resort to cheap slapstick humor in order to get big laughs. You know, say, this is the very next chance I get. I'll be back with some more of these amusing little quips. Won't that be great? <laughs> Well, today is the final episode of The Secret of Lost Creek, and talk about excitement. I know, it looks like everybody's in for trouble with this gold. Yes, especially Robert and Russ. First, they stumble onto that illegal mining operation that Butler and Hardy are involved in. Mm -hmm. Then they're tied up and left beside some explosives. <laughs> now, Hardy and Butler aren't very nice. I mean, they even stole the gold nugget from Travis and Jeannie. But it looks like we're in for some action. I think so. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Wanna get the kids untied, we'll make a run for it, okay? Take off the suit. Only I wear the suit, pal. Take it off. Thank <laughs> you. 
boulot. Federal agents picked up Butler and his whole gang early this morning. He got them for illegal mining on federal land. <laughs> What's a 40 pound gold nugget feel like, Travis? Like 40 pounds, I guess. <laughs> oh, Jeannie, dear, you must have been frightened out of your wits. Yes, ma'am, I was. You're a hero, Travis. No, the hero was the guy who got us out of the mine and led us to that water chute. He saved our lives, and that was the last that we saw of him. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fogo? I'm FBI Special Agent Jim Warren. Yes, sir. I don't have a lot of time, but before I left for Washington, I just thought I'd come in and thank these young people for all their help. Help with what? With the illegal mining operation. I've been searching for weeks, but it wasn't until you kids came back from Stoneface with that crazy story about Bigfoot that I really got my first break. Oh, wait. You don't have any idea who I am, do you? I'm sorry. Maybe you recognize me better with my beard. Black beard? Yeah, it was a black beard. I'm glad I'm rid of it. You're alive. We thought you bought it last night in a blast. Oh, listen, that whole place blew when I was about halfway down. I, I, I don't know how I got out okay. Well, I guess we have you to thank for saving these kids' lives, Mr. Warren. But, sir, maybe you wouldn't mind telling me, why did you break in here the other night and steal Robert's photo? Well, that wasn't me, Mr. Fogel. That was Hardy Sinclair. Hardy? Yeah, it was Hardy's job to scare people away from the mountains so they wouldn't get close enough to discover the mine. So that's why he wore that Bigfoot suit. Right. Of course, when Robert took his picture, you knew he'd better come back and get it. Before it got published, and a whole lot of curious people were up here looking for him. It's just a shame that gold nugget got lost in the explosion. Now, the only thing left of old Homer's treasure is a box full of rusted junk. Oh, oh. but just imagine, Adelaide, these old clothes once belonged to Grandpa. Maybe we could launder them and donate them to the Historical Society as artifacts. That is a wonderful idea. But first, let's look in the pockets and see if there's anything. Oh, that's gold dust. Oh, see if there's any more. Oh, 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 oh. You're going to be a legend around here, you know that? Girl who cracked the code and found the treasure lost creek. Ah, uh, but it's sort of sad, isn't it? I mean, now that there's no more mystery. Although I am glad for Grandpa, because I think he'll sleep a lot better at night. Now that he knows the answers to old Homer's rhymes. And you thought nothing ever happened to the small town. I'll admit, Chicago's never been as exciting as last night. Don't face mountains. Well, it can get pretty exciting on top of Lost Creek Mountain, too. When the full moon's out. Oh, really? Has Cammy ever, uh, seen the full moon from the top of Lost Creek Mountain? Can we who? Wow, talk about action. I really like this movie. So did I. And on Monday, we're in for even more excitement with the premier episode of our new club movie. Don't miss it. But first, here's today's Hall of Fame. The Mickey Mouse Club Hall of Fame! Each week, the Mickey Mouse Club scans the globe, looking for kids who do really cool stuff. 
and presents them with the club's top honor, the Mickey Award. Today's first Hall of Fame honoree has already performed with some of the world's leading orchestras. She's 12-year-old Leela Josephowitz, and her instrument is violin. We caught up with Leela at her home in Westlake Village, California, on the day of a big performance. Watch. By the time most kids are just getting up for school, Leela Josephowitz has already put in several hours of rehearsal. <laughs> She began playing the violin when she was three. At eight, she was performing in public. Today, at age 12, she balances school, friends, rehearsals, violin classes, and performance while still trying to live the normal life of a teenager. Rehearsals are fun, you know. Shouldn't be work. On weekends, I usually practice about four to four and a half hours. On um, these days, I usually get in about four. I don't have that much time to go, like, fool around and stuff. But when I do, I usually have pretty good time. When I play teddy ball or boxing gloves and stuff, or at school in PE, whether you play, like, football or um, volleyball, it's I twist the finger back or whatever, then it'll be like really bad because I can't practice. Hey, Vivi, do you have to go to school today? No. Gosh, you're lucky. Leela's younger brother, Stephen, knows that the reason his older sister is playing hooky today from school is because she's performing tonight in a concert. And your whole tempo seems a little bit on the slow side, huh? The only kind of playing she'll be doing today is rehearsing on her 250-year-old violin. Plus, she'll be meeting with her violin teacher, Robert Lipset, to prepare for tonight's performance. Now, Lila's many hours of rehearsal will be rewarded as she performs at a benefit for the Young Musicians Foundation. And just before she goes on, she can be found backstage doing what she's always doing, rehearsing. I know there's going to be a concert, and I want to be really good. Yeah. You just feel nervous, but you just know that, like, you work hard and you can't just fall apart. Congratulations and welcome to our Hall of Fame. Our next Hall of Fame honoree calls himself the Court Jester of Magic. He performs at fairs, festivals, and special occasions like this. So here's 13-year-old magician John Gominiak. <laughs> welcome, everyone. My name is John Gominiak, and I was invited here to share with you the mystery and the wonder of my magic. No. Now, every magician needs a big opener to start their show, and I'm no exception. I have one right, right here. This is my big opener. <laughs> but I know what you're all waiting for. You probably want me to take something like a handkerchief, show it on both sides, take it, open it up, fold it up, and produce a bird. I can do that. Good. Let's put them in here. There we go. Sit right in there. There. Now, here, Josh and Kevin, can I get your help? Could you make a, a, a your hand in the shape of a gun, just like that? And on the contrary, I want you to aim at this balloon and say bang as loud as you can. Okay, you ready? And on the count of three. Ready? One. Put it on here so they get it better. Two and three, go. Bang. <laughs> and now, the one you've all been waiting for. It's 
my last one. <laughs> now, let's see. Everybody get your fingers moving like this. Everybody do. And anybody know any magic words? <laughs> Half a banana? What you say? Oh, Abra, Abra. Wait a Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you. Well, then I know that some of your tricks require a little help. Is there any tricks that Tiffany and I can assist you with? Oh, yeah, I have one right here, Josh, if you don't mind stepping over here. Here, Josh, would you take this end of the rope? Tiffany, take this end. And tug on it. Make sure it's a strong rope. Tug on it real hard. Is that a strong rope? Yeah. <laughs> Is that a strong rope? Very strong rope. First time you had two suckers on one line. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll make the rope into three equal pieces, just like this. I'll cut the top and the bottom to make three equal pieces. Here we go. All right, here we have one, there's two, and there's three. Tiffany, place your hands in the shape of a cup, just like this. Yeah. I'll put these in your hands just like you had a handful of spaghetti. You ever have a handful of spaghetti? Uh-uh. <laughs> That's good. Here, Josh, walk over and pull one rope out of Tiffany's hands there. Well, okay, step back over here. And now, Tiffany, take one rope out of your own hand. Give it to me. There we go. Here. Um, no dessert for you tonight, Tiffany. <laughs> That's okay. I remember an old magic spell that'll bring these ropes back to their original size. I'll take the short piece, bring it up, make it even. The medium. See, the medium and the very long one out of three oh. different sizes. Everybody get your fingers moving like this. And I count up and say the magic words, Abracadabra. Ready? One, two, three. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. <laughs> It's three cool sizes. Wow. Wait a sec, how'd you do that? Can you keep a secret? Sure. Hmm. So can I. <laughs> well, thanks so much for being here today. Um, maybe later you'll tell us how that trick works. So right now, we'd like to welcome you into our Hall of Fame by presenting you with the Smithy Award. So congratulations, Thank John. Thank you. <laughs> Someone you know does something special. Let us know. Write to Hall of Fame, Mickey Mouse Club, Disney MGM Studios, PO Box 10200, Lake Buena Vista, Florida 32830, and be sure to include your name, address, and phone number. Because we like you. <laughs> National Car Rental is the official car rental of Walt Disney World, Disneyland, and the Mickey Mouse Club. National Car Rental features GM cars like the Pontiac Sam Sport SS. <laughs>
Saturday, get ready for something special. Oh! Yeah! Saturday at 6 p.m., party time with one of our favorite episodes of the Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah! You'll see just what goes into the making of our incredible video jam. Plus, we'll have an interview with a pig. <laughs> All this and so much more. It's great! Don't miss this special edition of the Mickey Mouse Club this Saturday at 6 p.m.